My next guest takes on Carrington Banks coming up here at Bellator 184 on October 6th. It's Steve Cazola joining me here on the program for the very first time. Steve, how are you? I'm amazing. Thank you, James, so much for having me. It's an honor to be on here. Hey, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you on my program as well. And uh, where are you right now? Looks like you got some killer weather wherever you're at. Oh, I'm in beautiful, sunny Southern California, baby. Vista, California. And my beautiful apartment complex got beautiful uh, sky view here. I love it. Living the dream, baby. You certainly are, man. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about, uh, you know, obviously the run you've been on in just a second. But uh, I always ask uh, fighters who I've never had on here before, uh, you know, sort of the, the general, um, you know, question, which is uh, how would you get involved in combat sports? Well, originally I started out with traditional martial arts. I did Taekwondo starting at the age of seven years old. Just kind of needed some discipline, some structure. I was a wild kid. And uh, my mother was like, okay, we need to put you in something. So she put me in Taekwondo and started competing in uh, you know, tournaments, doing you know the typical forms, board breaking, sparring. Got my black belt by the age of 12. And uh, then kind of just started doing more traditional sports, you know, baseball, football, and such. And played football and uh, baseball and even ran track in high school. Got recruited by a Division three college and played one year of college football. Then I was like, you know what? I don't think this is for me. So I was at just a small uh, Division three college in my home state and my hometown. I was like, I need to get out. I need to kind of spread my wings a little bit. So I transferred to Northern Illinois University. And after just like a couple months of just living like a normal, like, non-student athlete life i was like i gotta do something so i uh the ufc was up and coming at the time i was like maybe i should try you know mixed martial arts i've done you know traditional martial arts before let's give this a try found a local gym and uh, peak performance mma like where they're just renting out like space at a karate gym i mean this is eight years ago so this is like just the beginning in illinois where mma is not so prevalent and uh just started from there did my amateur uh career in college went three and one as an amateur and then uh moved to california in 2013 and turned pro and, and how'd you end up linking with Bellator initially? Well, what happened is I went four and zero as a professional, and my teammate Fernando Gonzalez uh, just put like put something out there in uh, Facebook, like, "Hey, you know, looking for uh, a lightweight fighter with uh, four fights or less." I was like, "Well, that's me." I was four and zero at the time, so I hit him up, and I was like, "Dude, I'll take that fight." And so, uh, you know, it just happened to work out, and ended up fighting uh, Jonathan Rivera, who was also four and zero at the time for my Bellator debut, and I believe that was January 2015. Excellent. Yeah, and, and like I said, you've been on quite the run. You got the eight and zero record. Um, you know, obviously uh, quite impressive. Um, do, do you are you a full time fighter, or do you have a job on the side that sort of pays the bills and everything like that? Yeah, still got a job on the side. So I'm actually blessed enough where I work in a gym. I'm the fitness manager up at Huntington Beach Ultimate Training Center run by Tiki Gosen, uh, who's my manager and one of my head coaches as well. So uh, I got a degree in kinesiology. So I've been, you know, studying the human body for years and been a personal trainer, performance coach, martial arts instructor. So uh, on top of doing that, I was able to work my way up to a more of a management position now still teaching, still coaching and uh, doing that. So I have a great job with them. And then also spending the other half of my time uh, being a professional fighter so uh it's awesome man i absolutely love it yeah i can tell uh, the enthusiasm with it and obviously it's uh, a lot nicer uh, you know working in a gym than working in an office and you know having to get the suit and tie off and going on the i can't mat. do it yeah i know can't do it <laughs> I, hear <you. laughs> I, I hear you man it's not for everyone um let's talk about your last fight you, you fought in march uh, you know here we are in october um did you want this much time off or did you want to get in the cage sooner I want to get in the cage sooner. I always want to get in the cage sooner because before, you know, with my last Bellator fight um, in 2015, I was ready to go right away. But there, there was a miscommunic- miscommunication. There's just something off because I, I fought for Bellator twice in a couple months and I uh, had two knockouts and they just never called me back. So I don't know what went wrong with that. And uh, I had a year long layoff and went over to World Series of Fighting, fought for them, had a first round knockout for them. And then they were having trouble, like, getting me situated. So I, I disconnected from them. And then, thank God, I found Tiki. And he's like, we're going to get you back in the Bellator. We're going to re-sign you for a new contract. And we're going to get you where you need to be. And I uh, just happened to work out that way. Had a fantastic uh, fantastic performance, March 31st. First round knockout, 28 seconds. Came out, no injuries at all. I mean, when you end the fight that quick, no injuries. You want to just turn around and, you know, get right back to it. Especially since I had a you know, relatively long layoff. But, you know, man, it just... It's not always on the fighter and the manager. It's on the promotion, too. they got to match you up at where they see fit and put you in there. And as I work my way up, I know more opportunities will come and the frequency will start picking up more. But I'm just happy to be fighting more than just once in a year now. So we'll you know, take care of business October 6th and then hopefully just get a quick turnaround. I'll love to fight again before the end of the year or uh, very early beginning of next year. Well, either way, it's worked out well for you because this is a pretty big fight. Um, you know, on paper, I, I, this is actually one of the matches I'm really looking forward to. You guys are both undefeated. It's Carrington Banks is who you're taking on. Uh, obviously, fought on uh, season uh, 21 of the Ultimate Fighter. He's a you know training at Combat Club. You know, how do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? 
Very well. I mean, we're very similar as far as experience wise. I mean, even though it's his record says six fights, I mean, he does have some fights on Ultimate Fighter, which I, you know, I count that in my book as experience 100%. So, as far as professional fight experience, right on that same level, he's got a great amateur wrestling background, Juco national champion. Uh, you know, and he's a grinder, man. He's going to try and, you know, come in, take me down and try to steal this fight and grind this fight away, but I will not allow it. I am a finisher, 100%. None of my fights have even gone out of the second round. But I don't care whether it's a knockout, whether it's a submission, whether it's in the first, second, third round. I will finish him. Does it add a bit more in just knowing that you know he's had that notoriety on the Ultimate Fighter and he's also got the undefeated record? I mean, you could be the first guy to hand him a loss. I, and I've been that guy before, and, I, and I'm the one, and I'll be it again. Nice. I like it. Uh, let's talk about training camp. Uh, who are some of your main training partners that you're working with uh, ahead of this matchup? Well, working at a couple places. So Huntington Beach Ultimate Training Center, Tiki Gosen is one of my coaches, along with Coach Paul Herrera. They've uh, done a great job bringing in some Iowa State wrestlers and guys who train at the Olympic Training Center, Jesse Doyle, Danny, uh, Jeff Glossner, and so, so some of the guys I've been working out there. And then also training at 10th Planet Oceanside, uh, and uh, that's been great too, working with Gio Martinez and the Martinez brothers, all the 10th Planet freaks who are just amazing jiu-jitsu practitioners. And I got my boxing coach, Manny Torres, at UFC Jim Carlsbad, who's just that diamond in the rough. I found him, and it was awesome, you know, working with him, man. So I have the right team around me. I got a great mental performance coach in Tim Dixon. So I I put together the best team I could for this training camp, and it's a lot different from my last training camp. I, I don't wait for a loss to make improvements. If I see something that's wrong or something that needs improving or fixing, I will handle it right then and there, and that's what we've done. And this has been the best training camp so far. I've grown. I've challenged myself, and all matters physically, mentally, spiritually, I'm ready to go. I love hearing that. Uh, how, how about the weight cut? I mean, we're a couple weeks out from this, getting down to, to 55, everything on point. Absolutely. Only you know seven, eight pounds away. I'm not the type of person who likes to cut a lot of weight. I usually only walk around between 167 and 170 out of camp. When I'm in camp, you know, I'm eating so well and staying very consistent with my training where I'm only like 163, 165. And then it's very easily, you know, easy to make you know, 155, 156, uh, which is the limit there. And I do it naturally. I do it healthy. And, you know, a happy fighter, a healthy fighter is a dangerous fighter. And that's always what I look on planning to be happy and healthy. And let's say you get a finish in this fight and you know you want to get back in the cage as soon as you can because you talked about, you know, you want to fight as much as possible. Um, is there anyone you have your eye on in the division? I mean, the Bellator lightweight division, pretty stacked, but uh, it seems like, you know, a win here would really propel you up those rankings. Absolutely. You know, well, I called out Dylan Dennis in my last fight and I have yet to hear from that man. I've called him, I called him out in person at the stadium. I called him out on every social media. He has yet to respond to me. And at this point, I think he's just a publicity stunt because we don't even know what weight division he's fighting in, let alone when he's fighting. And yet they're you know putting his stuff on social media. So at this point, I think it's just a publicity stunt with him. So I'm not even too worried about him. I'm going to look past him. And uh, I think Adam Piccolotti would be a great matchup. He's one of those guys. He's got a fight coming up uh, on the 23rd. He's got a tough opponent, so I'm very interested in that matchup. Uh, he's 9-0. and Maybe he'll win and be 10-0. and We'll see what happens with that. But that would be another guy I'm looking to. You know, I just want to work my way up, man. And uh, one one step at a time, one fight at a time, all the way to that belt. And you kind of look at a guy like Brent Primus who, you know, like yourself, you know, great record, finally got his shot, and now he's the champion. Like, it's, it's Bellator does kind of give opportunities to those fighters who, you know, sort of have earned it. Maybe not necessarily the, you know, the biggest names type thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but you got to be smart as far as the business perspe- uh, perspective as well. So under this contract right now, I'm not looking to fight for the title. I would like to renegotiate and get some more money if I'm going to be going for a title and, you know, fighting for those big names. But at the end of the day, I'm still looking for, to work my way up and show everyone I'm here, you know, here and I mean business. I'm one of the best in the world. I know it. My team knows it. Now it's just a matter of being put on that platform and demonstrating it. And Carrington Bix is going to be a great opportunity to demonstrate some of my uh, grappling skills and my overall game. So as, I can't wait, man. See, that's good management right there. Renegotiate the contract before you get the title fight. I like that. Absolutely. I mean, you got to be smart in this, man. It is a business at the end of the day, and your health is on the line when you're doing this. And we're, it's not like you're making millions of dollars, especially when you're uh, coming up like this, you know? Yeah, I still need a, a full-time job on the side to make ends meet for my family, my wife, my son. And, uh, and if we're going to be fighting for titles and big names, absolutely. I'm absolutely down, but we got to make sure that we're getting it for the right price and getting what my family deserves. What do you like doing on your downtime? Uh, you're from Illinois. Are you a big sports fan at all? I know, obviously, uh, you know, Chicago is a pretty big uh, sports city. Absolutely. I mean, I grew up watching, you know, the Bulls back in the heyday of Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. Um, but honestly, man, I am so uh, engulfed with being a fighter and a coach and a husband and a father that I, I literally I watch mixed martial arts. Um, if I can catch the Bears game, I will. But in my off time, I usually like to go uh, shooting. I love going to the range and shooting with my guys, a lot of my veteran buddies. And I also like doing archery. That's also a fun thing. So it's also a mental training as well. I mean, those are preparations that also help me as a mixed martial arts and as a person. Uh, that, that stuff's not easy. It is hard to do. So if I am uh, get some free time, love doing archery, 
love doing shooting, love watching fights, or just spending time with my wife and son and uh, my close family here. It's Bellator 184. It's coming up here on October 6th, live on Spike TV. Uh, Steve, this was an, a blast, man. It was really good, uh, great getting a chance to talk to you. Just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media, and if you got any thank yous or shout-outs, the floor is yours, man. I appreciate that. Well, you can find me at Steve Cazola MMA on Twitter, on Instagram and Facebook, Steve Thunderbeast Cazola. I really love interacting with all my fans and appreciate, you know, if you guys ever have any questions, love talk, you know, talking to it. Shout out to all my coaches and my teammates at Huntington Beach Ultimate Training Center, 10th Planet Oceanside, my coach Manny Torres at UFC Jim Carlsbad. Thank you to my sponsors, Clinch Gear, SoCal Fresh Prep, my food sponsor, Pierce Labs, my supplement sponsor, Quality Environmental, Monster Energy. You know, we're getting some big names up there. You know, Toyota Escondido is looking to hop on board. So we're getting uh, – people are seeing uh, – starting to join the team now. So I'm really excited for these potential sponsorships that are coming that's going to help provide for my family and my training and giving my coaches what they deserve as far as compensation as well. And uh, thank you so much for having me on the show, man. It's been great talking to you, and I look forward to talking to you again after this win.